Hello and welcome to the Real Raw Redeemed podcast. This is Sarah, your host, and I'm excited to talk about this today. I get on this little high, <laughs> like Holy Spirit high, every time I get to meet and fellowship and just be with the other women that go to my church, different churches, all kinds of churches, but we're all big, big strong believers in Jesus and the powerful redemptive work of his son, well, of God and his son, Jesus. And it's just so amazing when you, when you bring believers together and this is just a coffee time. It's not even, it's not a Bible study. It's not a small group. Um, obviously the power and the presence of the Holy spirit is there, but we're just taking time to share, to get to know each other, to connect with each other, to fellowship with each other. Um, just have conversation. And so we have conversation about the things that are happening in our life, uh, really the evaluation of our, our hearts, our posture of our hearts and where we are and the things that we, we are declaring the things that we're decreeing the things that, you know, maybe things have been done in the past. They, they say, I kind of laugh because in the bathroom, of the woman's house who it's in, there's a sign that says, don't look back. You're not going that way. And I'm like, I love looking back. And in our our group, there's so many women now that we have to break up in different groups at different tables. Uh, We talk about the power of a prayer journal and how when you look back through your prayer journal, you see all of God's answered prayers. And some of the prayers you were praying, you thank God. You're like, thank you for not answering that prayer. Thank you for not giving me that thing. Uh, because you didn't give me that thing because that door never opened, another door opened and I received an even greater thing. And we just talk about the blessings that God has bestowed on our lives and the, the things that we're praying for to have God transform. And when you just come together with the faith, the connection, the power of the Holy wisdom of the wisdom of the Holy spirit, it's, it's mind boggling. The things that open, I always leave there feeling like I'm on a Holy spirit high. I'm like, I was actually just filling out a form for the birth center and they're like, do you ever do drugs? I'm like, does the Holy Spirit count as a drug? (laughs) I feel like I'm on a high sometimes. And we went into this. We're not going to get into it in this episode, but the spirit, soul, and body and the power of this, the connection, the awareness of this. And my mind was literally just blown because so often in a worldly sense, uh, my husband and I are even working with the Christian people to help us go through like some early marriage stuff. And, and they talk about the body, mind, and spirit. And I'm like, no, that's actually (laughs) all wrong. The body definitely is the flesh, bones, and blood. The mind is actually different from the spirit. Uh, The mind is actually of the soul. The mind is the will, the emotions, the internal belief system that's actually founded in the soul. The spirit is is separate. Spirit is, by definition, man's hidden part, the deepest, intermost part. Our spirit was created to contact, receive, and contain God, who is spirit. So it's his spirit within us. So it's not body, mind, and soul, because if it is just that, you're you're missing the most important part, right? The spirit of God. But we're not getting into that today, but we are going to get into... Uh, the biggest difference I believe in people who don't believe, or I, I guess I don't even like that word, but non-believers or non-Christians or non-followers of Jesus, uh, I, I, sometimes it depends, resonate with I'm a Christian. Uh, if it means I follow Jesus, then yes, but not in the sense of I'm better than anybody else or more holy or more righteous or, or more deserving of good things. Like none of that actually is true at all. Uh, so it depends, right? I think so many things are situational and circumstantial, but in talking to someone close to me who I deeply care for and love about my faith and about where they're at in their faith, uh, the kind of brush your shoulders off, let's change the talk ending to the conversation was, well, all you actually really need to be is a good person. And and then you're fine, right? There was no actual talk about heaven or hell. And by not choosing your choosing, by not choosing your choosing. So I choose to put my faith, 
my trust, my belief in Jesus, the one who has set me free. And because of that belief, we'll live for eternity. I mean, we're all going to live for eternity. It's just where, where would you like to live? It's like, would you like this home or that home? You're going to have a a place where you get to live forever. Why not choose heaven over hell? (laughs) And some people just, I just don't believe in that. It just, I don't really care. I don't believe in it. Um, I just think, you know, you don't need to be quote unquote Christian. You just need to be a good person. And I wanted to bring that up today as our topic and point of discussion and conversation, because there are some limitations to that. And sometimes there's just awareness. Sometimes there's just knowledge. Sometimes, you know, ignorance is, is not quite bliss. <laughs> there are some things I'm like, I just don't need to know the details of. I don't necessarily want to be ignorant of, um, because our mind is permeable. It's penetratable. Uh, that word actually used to come up for me in therapy a lot as an experience, not so much a word, but as an experience that I, I felt like I wanted away from me, felt like, get it away from me, like a rejection, almost. I was rejecting this particular certain style or type of penetration. It was like penetration of uh, negativity, penetration of fear, penetration of worry, of things not working out. And it is, I mean, the Bible literally says to take your thoughts captive. And uh, when you're experiencing that penetration or they're trying to come in, I'm laughing because I'm pregnant right now. And so the first thing that came to mind is like the egg, the little sperm trying to penetrate the egg. It's like hitting its little head against it. Like, let me in, let me in. My daughter was watching the um, old school, uh, what was it? The three little wolves and the big bad, or the three little, three little wolves. There's actually a reversal one where it's three little wolves and the big bad pig, but she was watching the three little pigs and the big bad wolf. And he's like trying to penetrate the house and let me in, let me in, but not. And the pigs are like, no not by the hair of my chinny chin chin and the wolf's like then I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do this and I'm coming in and the wolves are like no right they're scared there's like so many things that that resemble fear and how we experience it and so they run away right they freeze oh no that's the fight the fight or the freeze response and then they run away that's the flight response there's so many things that even in culture exemplify that and and it can be like that and you don't understand why it's a penetration of things trying to come inside your mind that's the experience of this life with spiritual forces, with the enemy, constantly trying to penetrate our mind. And then there's fear inside and we don't know where it comes from. And the Bible says, take every thought captive. And you're like, oh my God, that's a full-time job. I mean, how much is that job? I mean, can I make six figures from that? Just literally sitting here all day, every day to trying to take every thought captive. And it's exhausting. Sometimes it's mentally and emotionally draining and exhausting. That's why we need to call on the wisdom, strength, the power of the Holy Spirit and say, hey, I need a helper. And he is our helper. He's our friend. He's our counselor. He's our comforter. He's our everything. He's who we received, the beautiful, most perfect gift when Jesus had to leave, right? He's who we received when Jesus had to leave. Write that one down. (laughs) And the Holy Spirit, there's nothing greater, nothing better. And you receive the Holy Spirit. I was actually talking to my husband about this. I'm like, called him as I'm on my high on this drive home. I'm like, oh my gosh, that was so amazing. Like I reconnected with these women. It's been a couple months because we moved and oh my gosh, it was so amazing. And did you know the spirit's different than the soul and obviously different from the body? And there's like three parts of man. It's not body, mind, and spirit or body, mind, and soul. Like so many of us are follow your soul. And it's not that it's soul, spirit, body. And we went into this whole thing and he was like, yeah. And I thought, okay, well, every, every human on the planet already has a spirit of Christ in them. And my husband said, well, I'm pretty sure you see that once you accept Christ into your life and he, you say that he is your personal Lord and Savior. I'm like, wait a minute. So totally a topic for a different podcast, but we got to this conversation about <clears throat> when people say, well, you don't really need to believe. Like I believe in something. Sure. I'm like, why, who are you saying sure to? <laughs> are you saying sure to yourself? Are you saying sure to just appease uh, this conversation because it's uncomfortable with you and you're just unsure and there's something stirring within you and you're like, I don't know what that is. So I want to avoid it. I want to flee. I want to run away from it. A little trauma response happening inside of you. And you're like, I don't like this. I'm just going to settle it and say, I want to end this conversation by, uh, you don't really need to believe in God. Or, I mean, I do. Sure. Yeah. There's something out there, whatever, but uh, you really just need to be a good person. Like that's, 
all you need to do, all you need to be. So I want to, I want to dive into this and break this down um, because some people are walking around with that definition. I just need to be a good person, not necessarily a Christian. Whew. Okay. I can't breathe because I'm pregnant and I'm talking fast. So I'm going to slow down and take a breath. <laughs> so Christ, right? JC, big man upstairs, Jesus Christ, who is God, who also is the Holy Spirit and his spirit dwells within us. When we say, hey, come into my life, live and dwell in my heart, like make my heart your home, get comfy, put your PJs on, you know, stay a while. Uh, that Christ's total forgiveness, uh, total, I want you to really, really open up your ears Holy Spirit, open up our ears to hear, to hear these words, not just Christ, sometimes forgiveness, Christ, if he feels like forgiving you because you apologize first and it wasn't just, oh, sorry, it's a sincere apology. No, it, thank God he doesn't wait for that. I mean, how long would he be waiting? How many of us would be walking around knowing we've been forgiven and we're like, but I didn't do anything wrong. I don't need to say sorry or feeling like we're a child again and our parent or teacher is like, say sorry to little Timmy. And you're like, sorry, Timmy, but I actually meant to punch you. Like, not like that, but Christ's total forgiveness. So I recognize it's not our total forgiveness. So sometimes we say sorry, but we're still holding on to unforgiveness, right? Sorry. Like, I actually don't forgive you. I just said that so they would get off my back. It's that's, that's human. That's, that's our kind of forgiveness. And we're not talking about ourselves here. Every time we do, we get lost. We get a little fumbly off, you know, we start to stumble and fumble. I thank God. He says that when we're in him, we don't need to worry about fumbling and stumbling. He's with us. He's going to make our path straight, but it's not our forgiveness. It's Christ's total. That's weird to say Christ's <laughs> Christ apostrophe s yes, total forgiveness. So notice it's not about us. It's not about our level, our capacity, our ability to forgive, whether we think we should or not, whether it's half-hearted or not, or whether we're doing it because someone has made us to or forced us to or not. This is all about Christ. The, the Christian life is all about Christ. That's the cool thing. You take the little spotlight off yourself and you put this big, shining, beaming spotlight on Christ. Who is he? What has he done? It's all about him. All glory, all honor, all everything to him. And that's the switch. That's the pivot. That's the Christian life is it's for Christ. I live my life for Christ. It's not, I just need to be a good person. I just need to do good things, say nice things, and then I'm good. That's still a self-centered life. That's not a Christian life. Of course, we're, we're human. We have natural self-centered tendencies and activities. <laughs> but a truly Christian life is about Christ. It's Christ's, again, that's weird to say, total forgiveness. That means do, that we do not have to earn our salvation Earn is works based. It's wages based. You go to your work or your job and you earn money. You earn a wage. It's an exchange. So understand energetically, this is an exchange that it's a spiritual exchange. It's our, it's our exchange of, I am willing to follow you, Jesus, and try, of course, that's a failure word. I always say that, but, but put forth effort, give effort to following you, to living the way that you have, that you lived, Jesus, like, to, to be the character of your heart, not be a God, but be like God, to be Christ-like, to be a follower of Christ. Uh, like little, little children learn because they see other people doing certain things, right? They're going to do what you do, not what you say. You can be saying all the right things, but they're going to ultimately do what you do. So it's action-based. Love is an action. It's not just a word. It's not a noun. I love you. I'm looking at this little <laughs> poster thing in the baby bedroom. There's also the office and it says, love you madly. That's kind of crazy because why would you love someone madly, right? Actually, my daughter pointed that that out the other day. She's like, mom, we need to throw this away. I'm like, why? Like I, I'm madly in love with you as a phrase. And she's like, but mad, how can you be mad in love? Well, if love is an action, if it's a verb, 
well, you can be mad. I love you. Like, but I'm so mad at you. I'm going to throw the dishes at you when we get in a fight. Like, you better watch out. <laughs> right? So it's kind of crazy. It's making me laugh. But that's something that you have to earn. Christ's total forgiveness means that we do not have to earn our salvation. There's, hold on. Hold, please. <clears throat> okay, there was another word that I looked up as I was thinking about this, and it, we're going to get into it in just a second. But the word defi definition of salvation is the preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. And I think it drives my husband crazy, but he's like, God, you like, I feel like I'm being scrutinized by my words. I love words. They have power. They have frequency. They have energy. They have meaning. And we can explain and define and understand things through the power of words. The Bible says that, right, the, the power of words is in our tongue. It's the, the greatest weapon we have, right? No weapon formed against me shall prosper because all we have to do is speak the name of Jesus, and the word of Jesus, and pull out scripture and be like, no. No, this is what's going to happen and stand on his salvation, stand on his promises, it's not our salvation. It's not our preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. We can't just run away from things. We have to say to Jesus name. We have to declare his name because it is Christ's total forgiveness, meaning total, like all of it. Well, you add this plus this plus this plus this plus this, you're going to get your total. I went to the grocery store yesterday and I'm like, the grand total is $33.96. And I'm like, okay, here's the card. Here's $33.96. You take it off the card. All right. There was the total at the end. You add this plus this plus this plus this plus this. There's total forgiveness for all of your sins. It's not just some sins. It's not the sins that you had or made when you were five or 10 or the really, really bad ones. And, you know, the minor ones, the not so quote unquote bad ones, you can take care of yourself. No, it is Christ total. Like all of them added up. The number on the bottom, the big bold number on the bottom. That's like, you owe this much. You're like, oh, fuck. <clears throat> uh, do you have payment plans for salvation? Uh, please. Yeah, stick me on one of those like 50 year payment plans for uh, salvation. I I'll pay it off over time. Jesus paid it for us. That grand total in the bottom, all of our sins added up. Christ's total forgiveness, meaning you don't owe anything. It says 0.00, .00 at the bottom. All your sins, let's say all of them are $100. How many trillions of dollars would you owe and have to pay back? Because the wages of sin is death. Well, he died for you. God, in and of himself, through the manifestation of his son, Jesus, came, died for your sins. And the wages of all your sins was death. He paid death. He died for you, for the total forgiveness. And then he rose again. So he conquered the grave. He conquered death. So you can conquer death too. You don't have to worry about living in death for eternity. You can go, yeah, I'm going to go to heaven. Yeah. Where, where do I sign up? Who, how do, how do I do this? <laughs> and that's what he wants. He wants you to, to live this and to live heaven on earth. And that's what Christ, a Christ life like is about. It's Christ total forgiveness it means we don't have to earn our salvation. We don't have to be on a salvation payment plan. Salvation is a state of being saved. You're saved when you say that Jesus Christ is your savior. That's, he makes it quite simple. I think a lot of people who think it's complicated say it's complicated and it's really not. When we give our lives to Jesus, we are justified. That's the other one I looked up. Justified, the definition, it's an adjective. Justified is explained as having done for or marked by a good or legitimate reason. When we give our lives to Jesus Christ, we are justified. So it's it's done for. It's, it's having. We we have. We possess it. We own it. We we own this salvation by faith alone. We don't own it. We don't have it. We're not marked by a good or legitimate reason because of anything that we've done, no matter how many good things we've done. So it's not just being a good person or doing good things. And, and if that's the belief, you're missing the mark. When we give our lives to Jesus, when we say, here it is, here is my life, take it. And we open our hands and we, we let go, we surrender. I surrender all. 
Not I surrender a couple things. I'm going to keep these other things. So I surrender all. When we give our lives to Jesus, we are justified by faith alone. It is by faith. It's by his grace, by his total forgiveness. That means that we don't have to earn our salvation. We couldn't, even if we spent our entire lives just doing good things and being a good person and saying nice things and giving money to the person that we see on the street corner and, you know, donating our time. But we do all of that and we don't put our faith in Jesus. What are you doing besides wasting your time? And time is the currency of life. Literally love. I was reading something the other day that said, How do you spell love? T-I-M-E. What do you spend your time doing? What do you spend your time? Who do you spend your time with? Are you just spending your time doing good things, trying to be a good person or saying every time I have the chance or the opportunity, I just be a good person. I just do nice things. No, those are workspace things. When we give your lives to Jesus, we are justified by faith alone. It is our faith in him, in Jesus, not just God, universe, manifestation, the freaking sun, the moon, crystals, rocks, whatever. I do, you know, I have faith in these breathing techniques. I breathe in and I let it go. I inhale and exhale and I'm good. Good to go. Did my breathing for today? No. (laughs) That's a gift to breathe. Of course it is. It's his breath in our lungs, not our own. When we give our lives to Jesus, we are justified by faith alone. Good works are not required. Good works are not required. They're not. You believe in Jesus. You don't have to go out and do a million good works. You don't have your checklist of like your New Year's resolution list. This year, I'm going to do a hundred good things because I'm a good person. Uh, Just do one thing. Like burn the list and do one thing. Put your faith in Jesus. Good works are not required. Practicing total forgiveness is not required. Ooh, that might ruffle some feathers. It's because you have been totally forgiven. If you're struggling and and you're still angry and you're still experiencing these emotions because of things that have been done in the past or things that are currently being done to you, you don't need to worry about total forgiveness. You can practice forgiveness and forgiveness exercises. God knows I've done a million of those written the letters. I forgive myself for, I forgive this person for, but still feel like, you know, a little kink there. Sometimes God's still working through it. It, You don't need to worry. (laughs) You don't need to keep doing these things and things and things and things. That's all works based. Practicing total forgiveness is not required. You don't need to worry. Have I totally forgiven this person? Maybe I haven't. So I need to go do more things. It is Christ's total forgiveness. That means that we do not have to earn our salvation. And so the more things you're trying to do, because you're claiming, decreeing, and declaring, well, I'm a good person, the less you're getting it. It's about Jesus. It's about what he has done. It is about the completed work of God's son. What a gift. Here's the thing. Chances are, (laughs) because of the way the Holy Spirit works, when you've been born again, we get another birth. We get our physical birth. Like I'm about to give physical birth to a baby boy in a couple months. That's going to be fun. (laughs) And then we have our, our chosen spiritual birth. When we're born again, we're saying to him, we're saying to God, we're saying to Jesus Christ, "I, I follow you. I choose to follow you for all of my life. I choose to, yes, be a good person, but not believe that I can save myself or I'm just going to go wherever I go after I go because I was a good person. That's self-centered self-focus. You being a good person, doing quote unquote good things. And that's a perspective, right? Someone else can come along and go, I wouldn't say that's a good thing. I would say a good thing is this. 
and suddenly you're in an argument about a good thing because of what you did or didn't do or someone else's perspective or perspective perspective or perception of how good is defined well i think good is giving a hundred dollars every month to a little orphan in africa and someone says really well what about the orphanages here what about the homeless crisis here what about this or what about that and so yeah why don't you make a change in your own hometown <laughs> and you're like but i'm doing a good thing for a little kid i've never met in africa i'm a good person <laughs> see how we get all our panties all wetted up and in arguments around things that really don't matter because we're putting it on ourselves and our works and what we're doing it's about christ Christ's total forgiveness means you do not have to earn your salvation. Guess what? If you don't donate a penny to any orphanage or any other country for all of your life, but you believe in Jesus Christ, you can still go to heaven. Some people don't like that. You mean I can save all this money? Oh my goodness, it's not about you. <laughs> when you are born again, you want to do good works. Naturally, you are led to, you are inclined to, you are open to doing those things. It's a byproduct. It's a result of, but it's not, it's not workspace. You can't earn a space in heaven. Well, I want that space. It's got my name on it. Uh, hey, bestie, if you go there before me, will you save me a spot? It's not like that. <laughs> like, hey, save me a spot in heaven, okay? I want to sit next to you. It doesn't work like that. No one else can do it but you. You have to put your faith in Jesus. And it is faith. It's through faith alone. We're, when we give our lives to Jesus, we're justified by faith alone. It's a personal decision to have faith in him. Okay. Is this sinking in? When you're born again, you want to do good works. You want to do good things. You want to pray. You want to forgive. You want to love your enemies. Ooh, this was a hard one for me for a long time. But man, the Holy Spirit came in and it's like, because I was like, Lord, rearrange the desires of my heart. I want evil things to happen to this person who's done evil to me. And he was like, no, you don't. And I'm like, yes, I do. And I fought it for a long time. And then I was like, Ugh, you're right. You're right. And he softened those areas of my heart. He was like, you really don't want bad, mean, hurtful things to happen to that person. And I was like, mm. <sighs> why do you have to be right all the time? <laughs> I really don't. Because if I'm saying I want that for them, I'm saying I want that for me. Jesus came for total forgiveness of our sins. For me, for you, for us. Which means when we let him in, we accept and we receive his salvation through because of the work he's done. We say it's available to everyone. And that's what I mean. It's a byproduct. You desiring to be a good person, choosing to be a good person, wanting to be a good person is because of the work of the Holy Spirit within you. You want to do that stuff. You, you want to live in a, in a good way, in a pleasing way in a way that you just desire to please God. You literally wake up every day and you feel like, God, I want to please you. That's why when you do something that isn't pleasing, you have this like pull inside of you, this feeling inside of you that's like, Ugh. Mm, I shouldn't have done that. Dang it. <laughs> I knew better. I know better. I don't like this feeling. And then we can admit our sins. We can admit our weaknesses and we can, we can go to the one that we heard or we, and we go to Jesus and we're like, Hey, I effed up. I shouldn't have done this. I chose to do it. I knew it. I knew I shouldn't have done this like that and see how he was guiding us the whole time, but he's never going to force us or coerce us into doing anything. He's like, go do you, but we want to do things that are pleasing to him. We desire to please God when we're living with him, with Jesus, with our son, with his son in our lives, because we are justified by our faith alone, not by good works. They're, they're really not required. We, we choose to do them. We begin to die, desire to do them because we desire to please God. We, we want our spirit within us wants God's spirit, the Holy Spirit to say, well done, and, and know that it's because of his son that we get to live a life that way. It's not living in our own way and just being a good person or doing good things or every now and then, you know, when I get a Starbucks gift card, I pay for the person's coffee behind me. 
if I'm feeling up for it. It's not like that. You might do that, but that alone is not your entry ticket into heaven. It's through his son. So I hope that you'll accept his total forgiveness and choose to live with him.